Hello everyone, are you wondering why you're not gaining the results in your mobility that you truly want? I mean, you're putting in the effort on a daily basis, some of you every single day and you're still not seeing results? Well, I'm gonna tell you why, it's two things more than likely. You're lacking intensity and you're also lacking adequate recovery, okay? That's why in today's video, I'm going to be guiding you through three powerful steady pace exercises that have adequate intensity that are gonna help you achieve better mobility so you can walk longer distances at the park, enjoy more activities with friends or loved ones, and even walk down the aisle at a wedding if that's your particular goal. As mentioned at the top, that second factor that's keeping you from getting results is active rest and adequate recovery. That's where you develop the results, okay? So, after you perform today's video, I'm going to give you a bonus. And what is that bonus? We've put together a stretch session that perfectly complements today's workout so that you can use it on your recovery days and truly recover and develop the results that you want. All you have to do is click on the link below to gain access to it. And if all this talk about recovery, results, intensity, and science-based strength training has piqued your interest, then make sure you go to www.msworkouts.com where we offer a premium subscription-based streaming service that lays out our science-based steady pace technique in a way that is tailored to your specific symptoms like foot drop, hip flexors, weak grip, and much, much more. So if you're ready to transform your body and reduce your symptoms using our proven science-based steady pace technique, then go to www.msworkouts.com to sign up and learn more about it today. Let's execute the steady pace dynamic leg extension targeting the quadricep. Now I'm seated in a chair. You're gonna ideally scoot all the way back into the chair. And really and truly, we want the chair's seat to come all the way into the back of the knee so that the entire femur is resting on the chair and there's no hip flexor involved. So this chair isn't quite ideal, but we're gonna rock with it. You also want it to be high enough so that your foot, when it comes down to what I would call the bottom turnaround, you are not hitting the floor, okay? So make sure your seat's raised up enough so that when the foot is underneath the knee, you're not hitting the floor. All right, we're gonna go to the starting position, which is the fully contracted position, the quadricep. So follow it up. Notice there's no resistance today, just my body weight. Stabilize, hold, and initiate movement down. Four, seven, clock is on. Seven seconds each direction, actively engaged. As I mentioned, we are working the quadricep. One to the bottom, turn around, now back up slowly. Now when I say actively engaged, it means flex the entire time. We are exercising, not just moving. For two, squeeze one, heading back down. We're going past the 30 second mark with this next effort. Muscle failure is the goal. That means the point where you can no longer continue to move slowly all the way back through that original range of motion. As I'm heading up, I'm thinking about flexing. I'm not worried about hyperextending. I want to lock me and squeeze and then heading back down. We're going past the 45 second mark with this next 15 seconds or next effort. This is really good for increased mobility, strength of lower body, stability into the knee. You wanna remind yourself why you are doing this exercise because exercising is difficult. Why? Because it's progressively challenging. That's where the results come from. Next effort takes us past 60 seconds and into what we call the exhaust range. I know you're feeling uncomfortable at this point. You should be because you're challenging yourself, feeling a deep burn in that quadricep. Squeezing that top. We're in the final 30 seconds. This next effort takes you past the 115 mark. Remind yourself, failure is the goal. Don't relax the muscle. We want to keep it engaged the entire time and you want to take the muscle to momentary muscle failure. When you get to that point, you slowly disengage, notate the time, and then just jump back in and give your best effort for the remainder. We're in the final opportunity, final effort. This next one's taking us past the 130 mark. So this is my last chance right here to reach muscle failure. I'm getting a little bit of a shake, squeezing at top. Completed, right? I did not reach muscle failure, but I completed the set. Slowly easing out and disengage. Completed. I need to increase the difficulty next time. Congratulations, that was the leg extension dynamic. It is now time to record your results. Make sure you print off the PDF progress journal that you have access to in the description box. If you don't already have something, you're gonna record not only the resistance you used, but the time that you made it to. What I mean by that, the resistance, I just used body weight. You may be using a band. The resistance is the challenge. The time that you made it to is ideally whatever time you reach muscle failure on, on the clock. If you made it the entire 130, then you completed the exercise and it's time to increase the difficulty. Also, make sure that you execute this exercise on the left and the right side. Don't play favorites. It's important to have a strong body on both sides. Let's execute the dynamic steady pace hip flexor 
set. We're going to use a band or a shirt towel, something to assist you to that starting position. And you're gonna utilize it if you need so during the exercise set. We're going to go to the starting position after taking a seat in a chair, scooting forward, sliding the band underneath your leg up into the crease. You're going to assist yourself to full flexion of the hip. You're then going to start to give the weight of the femur or leg back to the hip flexor. If you can hold the weight of the leg without using any assistance, do so. If you need to use a little bit of assistance, that's what the band or the towel is for. Meet your body where it's at. Initiate movement down for seven. Clock is on. The ideal tempo is seven seconds each direction. The key here though, is to keep continuous and uninterrupted loading. So at the bottom, just before we reach the ground, we're gonna pause without disengaging and without momentum, head back up slowly. We're isolating the hip flexor, moving through a full range of motion, taking what your body allows you to take. Pause at top, heading down. Muscle failure is the goal. We're exercising here, meaning we're trying to send a progressively overloaded signal with enough intensity prompt change. Heading back up for six, five, going past that 30 second mark. As you come to the top, breathing freely, squeeze, and then heading back down. Next effort takes us past 45 seconds. This is gonna help you lift that leg higher, going up steps, lifting your leg through your gait, all for a very deliberate purpose. Shaking, rattling, rolling is perfectly natural. That's the challenge. Pause at top, heading down. We're going past 60 seconds for the next effort and getting ready to head into the exhaust range, which is the final 30 seconds of the exercise. And you should reach muscle failure. When you get to the point where you can no longer continue to move slowly, you get to that point, continue with your best effort as if your leg was moving for a good two to three seconds, then slowly ease out knowing you successfully did it, and then just jump in, continue on for the remainder with your best effort. All right, we're in the exhaust range. This one's taking us past the 115 mark. Just your best effort. Muscle failure is the goal. Notice I'm starting to see a shake, a rattle, a roll. All right, final effort. This one here is gonna take us past the minute and 30 marks. So this is our last opportunity to reach muscle failure. Exaggerate your pace, let the muscle work, take what you can. It is still moving, my form's starting to deteriorate, but it am still moving, I'm gonna keep giving my best effort, and completed, slowly starting to lower. Notice I said, and completed, and I didn't say success, because I didn't reach muscle failure. You guessed it, it's time to record your outcome now. First thing we're going to do in the first column is Put the exercise, hip flexion dynamic technique set. The resistance is body weight in this category. Time, I reached a minute and 30. If you successfully reach muscle failure, you're gonna write down the time at which you reached failure. That is success. In the outcome, you're going to write, you do not need to increase the difficulty or okay. If you completed it like I did and it says 130, then you need to indicate that you need to increase the difficulty next time by adding resistance to the end of that femur so you're progressively challenging the body and successfully reaching muscle failure. And if you'd like to know how to add resistance to make this more difficult and continue to have the progression that's needed to make it exercise, click on this link and I'll show you there. We'll now execute the ankle eversion exercise to help reduce that foot drop. This is going to be an external rotation of the leg really working the external rotators, a little bit of the anterior tibialis. I highly suggest you place either a sheet of paper underneath your foot, take your shoe off so it's just your sock. We wanna reduce the friction of the bottom of your foot so that you're able to move through that range as efficiently as possible to let the muscle work. All right, you're gonna follow me to the starting position. We're executing a dynamic technique set. The starting position is extended or externally rotated all the way out. Now, you take the range your body allows you to have. You may not be able to externally rotate as far as I did. That's perfectly fine if you can't go as far out from an external rotation standpoint as you can. Initiate movement in for seven. So clock is on. Seven seconds each direction is the ideal tempo. A half second pause. We're working those external rotators or the eversion. You'll pause one, heading back out. Give your best effort. The rotation should be at the heel. You should not be externally rotating your limb, lower limb, or your knee. It's just that ankle, right? Heading back across. Next effort's gonna take us past 30 seconds. Muscle failure's the goal. On this exercise, that will be the point where you can no longer continue through that original full range without disengaging or relaxing. The second that you have to disengage or relax or you start to lose the ability to go slowly through a full range, notate the time that's on the clock here on the screen. That allows you to be measured. Being measured in exercise is super important because it gives you the map to results. Squeeze, heading back the other way. We just passed that 45 second mark. Remind yourself why you're doing this, right? We want increased function. We want 
to decrease that foot drop, which it will happen by facilitating the neuromuscular engagement in the particular area, being consistent, applying a progressive overload, you will see results. I'm continuing to rock and roll. I'm fatiguing here. We're going past that 60 second mark already. Next effort's taking us past the 115 mark. We're in the exhaust range, final 30 seconds. Again, muscle failure is the goal, so be very intent on understanding when you can no longer move slowly through that full range. All right, final effort, going past the 130 mark with this effort here. So last opportunity to reach muscle failure. Think about rotating at the heel. Don't externally rotate the knee as far as you can and complete it, right? Slowly disengaging. It is that time. It is the time to record your results. Yes, we are sticklers about it because it's an important piece of the puzzle. So ankle eversion, make sure you write down the exercise. It was a dynamic set, so it's important to know what mode we executed. We're gonna write down the time that you made it to. So again, I completed the exercise. I'm writing down 130. What does that mean? It means I need to increase the difficulty. Hopefully you reached muscle failure. If you did, you're gonna notate what time was on the clock when you got to the point where you could not continue with proper form slow motion through a full range. Last but not least, we're gonna write the resistance that we used, which we used body weight today. If you completed the exercise like I did, leave me a comment in the comment box below so that we can engage you and talk about the next steps in increasing the difficulty, which is key in exercise, okay? So that we continue to prompt the best results in reducing this foot drop. Just a reminder, execute the exercises from this foot drop exercise session on both legs. Don't play favorites. It's important to have your entire body strong, whether it is the side that's affected or not. So execute these on the left side and the right side. Our YouTube channel is a great place to start gaining strength, but if you want to get serious about reducing your symptoms and getting results, then you need to be on a weekly structured strength training program with other individuals just like you. And that's exactly what we offer at MS Workouts through our membership. Click the link in the video or below the video to learn how our membership can help you achieve your goals. And while you're on the website, make sure you sign up for the no cost seven day strength camp so you can experience how we can help you do the things that you love to do with more confidence. See you all next week.